What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Coming to you a little bit different background from my garage today. We're doing something different. I got a little box here, as you can see from the good folks that do it. Uh, they are an Iowa company here, only about an hour and 15 minutes away from me. So today, as you can see in the box, if you follow me on Instagram, I shared a picture of this, but I got some stuff to start making jigs. Um, I'm excited about what's in here. I've never done any of the jig making stuff. Completely new to me. I've read some stuff online. Watched a couple videos online on how to do this. Doesn't look to be too hard. The biggest thing is making sure you're staying safe. Um, of course, when you're making jigs, the way I'm making jigs, uh, you're using lead. So that's nothing to mess with. You know, you've heard of lead poisoning and stuff. So we want to be careful about that. So I'm going to throw the, uh, the camera on the tripod. I'm going to take you through what I got and what we're going to be doing today. All right, let's take a look and see what is in the box. So first off, you have the molds. Now, if you've read up anything on jig making or if you've ever watched anybody do jig making, this is probably the thing you notice most. You see the guys have these. And maybe you've even seen them in like a local tackle store or whatever. Um, but you can see they're do-it molds. They make all their own molds in-house. I hope to be able to travel up to the... Um, the, the plant there where they make all these, do the CNC machining, see their whole warehouse and everything. I think that would be a super cool experience to check that out. But um, yeah, right here in Denver, Iowa. So pretty cool. Uh, I'm happy to, uh, to do some of this and help show off that there's more than just corn here to Iowa. Dang, I'm do it here. So we got this one. This is a brush jig type mold. And you've probably seen these, you know, a lot of people who make their own tackle, you know, even a lot of companies have kind of have the similar, uh, you know, designs and such. But we got the brush jig. The one I'm excited for, and that's the one we're going to be working with today, the Ned Head Jig. Well, they call it the Min Midwest Finesse Jig. Obviously, they're not going to be calling it the, the Z-Man Ned Head, but it's a Midwest Finesse, basically Ned. I got the Poison Tail Jig, which is like your swim jig head. You can see there pointed. It's got the vertical line tie, so that's going to come through grass and everything well. Um, that should be a fun one coming up. I got the round ball head jig. So we're going to make it. I'm going to have Randizzle over. We're going to do an absolute Randizzle certified exclusive where he picks out the hooks, skirts, everything. And we're going to go through making some of these. Um, the hooks uh, that they need for these, they're actually a horizontal line tie hook. Those were all backwards, so I don't have any of these. Can't make those yet, but I'm going to be doing some of those. Excited for that. And then finally, the other one I think maybe we'll do today. Um, this is what do they call it? The Maniac Mullet Jigs. So this is like your, you know, your typical swim bait hook. Um, so I got hooks to make the little 3 16 ounce. And as you can see on all these, the cool part is they have everything labeled. So they tell you like what hooks to use. They show you what, um, you know, each slot is the size for. They go through all that. So hook sizes, hook length, everything, which is really cool. Like I said, I've never done any of this. So this is fun to me. As you all know, I, uh, I paint my own crankbaits, but Never got into any of the jig stuff. Okay, there's a few different kind of hooks, nothing uh, too impressive or exciting here. Just different various hooks that fit the different molds because depending on the angle of the hook, um, how deep it is, only certain hooks will work in there. You can't just pick any old hook and I'll kind of show you that more up close here, but a bunch of hooks. I got some skirts, of course, you can't have jigs without a skirt on them. So I got, I don't know, some watermelon right here, some green pumpkin, a little green pumpkin green. A little brown, so you know, just, oh yeah, even some purple, love me some purple, but we're not gonna get to that today. I don't have all the stuff to actually tie them. Um, I, don't, I don't even have the stuff to bake the jigs yet. That's one part I'll get to, but we're gonna kind of do the first part of setting all this up and pouring some, but I got skirts. The other things you need to make the jigs, like the little uh, deals that you put in the hole so it keeps a, a, a hole open for your actual brush guard. They come with one in that's like kind of sealed, so you stick that down in your jig and glue it in after you're all done. Some other stuff here, I don't even know what all this is for. I got some of their Protec paint, so the green pumpkin. I got, what was this one? Magic Craw Blue, and then a Magic Craw Purple. So Magic Craw Purple, Green Pumpkin, and a Magic Craw Blue. Now, probably one of the most important pieces is you've got the, the deal to actually melt your lead. So we're gonna get that plugged in. I've got a fan here to help blow this out. I've got my garage door open. Gonna plug the fan in, try to blow all this out. Like I said, you have to be careful with this lead crap. It is nothing to mess with. So I'm gonna vent it out. Uh, I'm gonna be back there while this is cooking, getting all melted down. Uh, I'm gonna throw the safety goggles on, gloves and such, and then we're gonna get to pour them. Hopefully there's not much else to it. Oh yeah, and the lead. Uh, I've got a 10 pound brick of lead. I'm gonna set that in there and hopefully this melts all up. All right, so we've got the, the lead cooking in there. I hooked up a fan right here. As you can see, that's blowing all that smoke the first time you use it. Um, I had an awesome couple people let me know that this is gonna smoke a lot and stink. So got the fan on, garage door open. We're throwing all this right out the garage. 
All right, quick update. We're still cooking. It did get really smoky, through, so I threw on my uh, my painting mask. Still cooking, still not melted. Hopefully soon. I feel like we need some somber music in the background for this. Okay, we are finally all melted here. So this is what it looks like. You do not want to mess around with this stuff. Hot molten lead is no joke. You do not want to get, you know, eat lead or get any of it in you. It's bad news. So I don't know why I'm ducking down. They, they built these so you can move them. But anything I'm going to be touching lead with, I've got uh, a pair of nitrile gloves on. Uh, one, anyway. Um, so anything I'm touching with the lead, I can touch it with this and then throw this away when I'm done. And then for holding the molds, I've got a leather glove here. Going to put this on. So everything I've read says that you want to heat up your molds first. There's different ways of doing it. Most of the guys I've watched just kind of do some, some test pours in there. Um, so I'll do some of that and get the mold warmed up, uh, give you guys a close up of it. Of course, always wear your safety goggles. You only get one pair of eyes, so don't mess with that. I'm gonna pour these first three and uh, see what it looks like. Well, it's crazy. That lid takes no time at all to set up. By golly, that looks like a, a Ned jig head to me. Now I'm trying to keep everything kind of contained in the cardboard box when I'm taking lead out or anything. That way I'm not contaminating my workspace. Everything is going to stay here. These can go right back up in the lead pot. Want to be careful not to drip any of that on you. Yeah. See, I did have a little bit shoot through there since I don't have a hook or anything in it, but really just trying to warm this guy up. Maybe this isn't the right way of doing it. If you make jigs at home, comment below. Is there a different way you should heat these up? A torch or something? I don't know, but look at that. Look at how nice and silver and pretty those are all right let's get this guy loaded up with some hooks now this could be hot so i'm being careful not to actually touch the mold i'm going to use some of the owner hooks this is a size number one so i got a size one and a size one op that's going to be a little bit bigger i'm going to use the size one and the one sixteenth, and then in three thirty seconds and one eighth i'm going to use the one ot okay as you can see i got all of our little soft plastic keepers in there see that little metal piece the little hook underneath those things are tiny kind of a pain in the butt to get in there but that's going to be our soft plastic keeper so we got all those on let's uh shut up our mold and shut up me and make some jigs now you could say we're about to get jiggy with it how long did you think it would take me to to say that corny dad jokes now i did read when you shut it you want to hear a good click to make sure you're hearing the aluminum actually hit together which we did there that way there's no hooks or pieces in between there here we go first first time pouring will it work oh i missed Okay, let's let it solidify, I don't know. Well, that would be a no on the first one. For some reason, the first one did not work. I don't know why. Okay, we're gonna give that first one one more try here. I don't know what happened on that run. Ah, there we go, beautiful. Those look awesome. Okay, so that's the first step to it. Then when you take them out, you have to cut that little sprue off, that overpour part. I guess I should hold that more in the middle. That little overpour part, you don't want that on the front. So I've got a, a dedicated pair of pliers and nippers. These are gonna stay in here. These are flat on the back, so I can get, where are you, there you are. Flat on the back, just like that, so I can clip it flat to the jig head. And that's what you're left with, look at that. I just made my own Ned head. That's uh, that's pretty sweet and fun. Let's Let's do some more. Perfect, so nothing's stuck in between there. Here we go, next round. Let that solidify for like 10 seconds, make sure we're good. Like a kid on Christmas opening this up. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful little Midwest finesse jigs. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty dang fun. I was talking to one of the nice gentlemen to do it. I'm like, man, I've never poured jigs. Uh, it seems like a lot of work. He's like, dude, it's not a lot of work. I've seen some of your paintings. This is easier than painting crankbaits. Uh, and I agree, this is definitely easier than painting crankbaits. And pretty fun, you know, there's not uh, a ton to it. It's just time consuming. Um, anybody making jigs by hand doing this, I mean, it is a job all in its own to get this all warmed up. You know, it took 20 minutes to warm this up, get my lead going, but once you've got everything, it's just kind of like an assembly line popping all these out. I've already got six new jig heads right here. So I'm going to just put the film on me and we're going to do a bunch. I'm not going to lie, it's kind of addicting. All right, well, as you can see, I just got done doing all those. That's 21 little jig heads in no flipping time at all. I don't know, maybe 
Five minutes? Easy. Uh, really addicting though. I could just keep doing this. Like there's always something about creating anything tangible, right? Where you actually have a finished product, whether it's, you know, painting or woodworking or doing something like this. Like I actually made little Midwest finesse jigs, little, little mushroom Ned rig heads. And I lose these so fast that this is awesome. You know, super good hooks. That's the cool part about making your own tackle is you can put whatever hooks you want. You want some nice, super duper sharp owner hooks. Put those on. There's different types of hooks, different bins. You can see this is not like your typical, uh, maybe if I hold it this way, typical hook. You can see there the point of it just barely points down. So it's got like a little hook on the tip of it. A ton of different types you can use out there. So I got this done. Um, let me cut off the rest of the sprues. You can see me do that real quick and fast forward. Then I need to go get my heat gun and we're going to dip some of these in paint. Now I don't have a toaster oven yet. Um, after you dip these in the Protect, the powder paint, you're supposed to have a toaster oven and cook these. That way it makes the paint super rock hard on it. But uh, uh, I'm going to dip them for now. I'll have to get a toaster oven. Maybe that'll be in part two where I do a, a different jig or something and do skirts and all that. I don't know. Okay, interesting. So there's one that didn't form. That little 1 16th ounce seems to be kind of finicky. So you can see there the hook. I'm checking each one as I go. The hook is all wobbly in there. That one didn't quite form correctly. So hopefully we can just use that over again. I don't know if I can get, hopefully I can wiggle the little piece out. There we go. I got my little guard too. I'm going to try re-pouring that here in just a second. There we go. We got them that time. Every one when I was clipping that little sprue off, I was just making sure every t everything, you know, the um, soft plastic keeper, making sure the lead and everything was tight to the head, not shaky or wobbly, manually checking and inspecting each one. Mm, let's make a couple of these just to see. Now you can see this mold for this, uh, this swim bait head is super easy. All you have to do is put the hook in. The eye of the hook there fits right in the hole uh, of the, the actual mold. Okay, not gonna lie, I may have gotten carried away. I said I was only gonna make a couple of these, but uh, I grabbed some hooks that came out of the box. I got a box of these Victory hooks from Do It for like, I don't know how many. I just pulled out a big thing of them. I don't know how many hooks are in there, a bunch. And uh, I just I just made a bunch of these in no time. Then my battery died, but. If you were to buy like 21 of those swim bait head hooks, how, how much would that cost? I don't even know. How awesome are those little guys though? Put a little paddle tail on the back of that. Oh yeah, you can see they have like the recessed eye hole deal there. So you can put your own like actual 3D eyes on it. I'm excited to give that a try. But now we're gonna try uh, powder paint coating some of these. Never done it before. I looked a video up on how to do it. So we're gonna try it. Quiet heat gun. It's like a green pumpkin with blue through it. Oh man, that looks so sweet. All right, fishing friends, just came in, got done for making jigs. That is a ton of fun. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty addicting. And when you have everything set up, it's like you wanna just keep pouring. It's like, man, I've still got 100 hooks here. I wanna get all of them done. But I did like, I don't know, 50 jigs in probably, I don't even know, 20 minutes, half, less than a half hour for sure. Like once I started going through them, man, so much fun. Got paint on some of you. You can see here, this is like a flat uh, matte green pumpkin on that little Ned head. This is a pumpkin with like green iridescence in it, green something, uh, pumpkin purple, I forget what they call it. I did one of the Ned rigs with like the green pumpkin blue in it. I mean, there's just so many different colors and stuff you can get into. I, I just, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, huge shout out to Do It for taking time to talk to me through the process, hooked me up with what I needed to, to get everything started. They made the process super easy and they're here in Iowa. Uh, I can't wait to go up and see the, the actual factory and everything. Comment below and let me know if there's a certain type of jig deal you want to see me pour. Um, and once I get a little bit better at this, these still have to be baked. Uh, but for example, this is the little swim bait head, little 3 16th ounce finesse swim bait head. This would be great with like one of those little 2.8 inch Kytex. I don't think I have any laying around here. Oh, for example, like one of these guys right here. That's uh, a little 2.8 inch Kytex type deal. That's actually a soft plastic I made with the guys over at the bait cave. but. Imagine that coming through. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to make more of these. It was a lot of fun. I can see how guys would get addicted to this. Um, but yeah, I made these little swim bait head deals. Those turned out pretty cool. Now, like I said, they have to get baked to actually harden the paint. Um, but you can put eyes on them when you're done. I just threw a couple eyes on this one just to kind of show you what it would look like. Um, takes little five millimeter eyes in there. Looks super cool. A bunch of fun. But I don't know. Comment below and let me know. Would you like to see some more stuff like this? Um, Next time, once I get a little bit better at this and go through it more, I would like to make some jigs. 
Um, I ordered some jig skirts. They're not all here yet. I, I showed you a few of them, but I still need to figure out how to tie them. I have not gone through any of that. So um, today's subscribe fishing friend shout out goes to my boy Nick, Fat Boy Fishing. Super nice guy, and he offered, he's like, dude, Debo, if you need any help with this, he makes his own jigs. You're actually going to see uh, some of his jigs coming up in a subscribe fish and friend unboxing. He sent me some. Uh, but I appreciate you, man, uh, and everybody else out there who continues to watch me, support me. Um, ah, I mean, it, it blows me away. And this stuff is so much fun. I cannot wait to make some more of these Ned heads, catch some fish on them on a jig that I made, you know, starting with a bear hook. Started with a bear hook and went to all that. And the fun part is you can do this all at home, too, you know, I mean... Uh, you can buy all the molds, the, the paints, everything out there to make a sweet little mushroom head just like this on your own. But that's enough for me. I got to get this edited. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, again, comment below and let me know if there's any sort of specific jig deal you'd like to see me make uh, and do a giveaway. I would be happy to do that. So enough for me. Off to editing. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Oh, yeah, and Iowa won today. Go Hawks. Let's win the Big Ted Tournament.